Today's episode is all about Squid in Port Philly Bay. I hope, I dream, I wish to catch a big fish. And I do it when I can. I'm a happy fisherman. And I do it when I can. I'm a happy fisherman. We are going to try and show you, as best as we can, what really works for us. I get lots of messages daily from people asking about technique, jigs, the road I use, and most important, the locations. In today's video, we will show you our way of catching squid. We are not saying our way is the best, but it works for us, and we are going to share it with you. So hopefully next time you are out there, you too will get great results. Next video is from September 2021. Fishing with our friend Yaya and his son, and we're fishing our favorite location, which is Prince George Marker. We chose this video to start with because of the location, jigs we use, and few tips that will hopefully improve your squid catching skills. Let's watch this video. Enjoy. We left Verabee Ramp at 1 p.m. and the first stop for us was Prince George Marka. On board with us, our friend Yaya and his son, who is a definitely a little happy fisherman. As we got at Prince George Marka, me and Yaya had a bit of a conversation about the jigs I use, while his son was already on a squid. Tip number one, when you got a squid on, you only wind back slowly and stay in contact with it. Do not have slack line at any time as you may lose your catch. Meaning don't lift your rod, then drop and wind. Just hold the rod and wind slowly. It was overcast and somehow the white jig worked really good. No long after, the second squid was on, this time on a solid black jig. Tip number two, when you net the squid, always net it from behind. If it gets off, it goes straight in the net. And that way you can point the squid away from the boat, so if he shoots his ink, you're not gonna get it over your face or over your boat. Here you can see the rod flick in motion that worked best today. But there's another one behind it. I don't know. Just, it is, it, it is. is another pig. Oh, you should hold it there, hold it. Hold it, hold it. Okay, tip number three. If you bring your squid and you see another one is following, that is the time when you hold it and wait. Throw another jig next to it, and 99% of the time, you will land both of them. And the theory proves to be right. This time, a really nice squid took the solid black jig. Father and son, happy moments, definitely priceless. We end up catching few more and again my bread and butter jigs, the solid black and the sapphire white did all the damage.
as you could see, our fiber inch jigs are the solid black by Yamashita and a Shimano T14 Sapphire White. This one actually rattles as well. But saying that, you can get these two colors in different brands like Rui Tang, Hiramitsu, Klix, you name it. Uh, average size for Port Philippe will be 3 0. As far as netting the squid, it's logical to net it from the back. And one more thing is that the person reeling in the squid should do a few steps back once the squid is closer to the boat. So the guy with the net doesn't have to stretch a mile. Smaller squid you can get away without netting, but as long as you lift it straight up, like 90 degrees out of the water, and when you grab it, grab it from the back, don't, don't you know, get it to face you because you'll cop it. We are going to play another video from the same spot, but on a different day. And we will analyze it after. Enjoy! This video is from 2nd of October 2021. We left Ferriby just after lunchtime and headed towards Prince George Marka. This time with me, Jerry and my little Chiquita. Distance from Ferriby to Prince George, it's around 15 kilometers, so it takes just about 20 minutes to get there. As we got there, Jerry and Mima were using the standard solid black jig and a sapphire white jig while I was doing experiments with different colors. No long, Jerry was on. The solid black jig proved once again successful. Few minutes later, second squid. Solid black jig again. Next squid, solid black again. Just pay attention how we land this squid. Mima walks back, so the squid comes right next to the boat. Putting the next behind it, is definitely the way to land it. In the meantime, I was trying more colors. The mustard so-called fast touch clip, it's a lifesaver. You can swap jigs in a few seconds and no need to cut the line at all. Doesn't matter how many colors I changed, the solid black was the jig of the day. Finally, I got one on a white jig. Well, it was an error squid. One thing I can tell you, if you get one of these, make sure you handle it properly. This thing bites and it can hurt like hell. How do you make the difference between error squid and so-called calamari? Error squid does not have full body fins. They are short, arrow-shaped. This squid is much tougher to eat, and that is why arrow squid is $10 per kilo cheaper than calamari. Saying that, arrow squid makes excellent bite if you chase snapper or gummy. Take a closer look at the fins on the arrow squid. Now, take a look at Calamari's full body length fins. That's how you tell the difference. Again, arrow squid can bite, and it has a beak like a parrot. To end this video, if it's overcast, try using solid black jig or some darker colors. All right. In the video we just played, you could have seen how the solid black jig was dominating on that particular day. 
In the next video, we will show a bit of underwater footage to be able to see the ground around the Prince George marker. To film this video, we use my camera design, the GoPro on a hook and belly bucket. Also, we use the underwater drone, which is Fifish V6, which we purchased through Underwater Australia. And then we had our happy fisherman Abel, who did some diving, filming and spear fishing for us. Enjoy! Prince George Marker is located four kilometers northeast from indented heads. The average depth between the marker and the shore is around four meters. This grassy and rocky area, together with nice sand patches, make a great squid spot. This healthy area holds quite few species of reef fish, sea urchin, and it makes a perfect spawning ground. Our free diver Bell did some filming and spearfishing for us. First impression, lots of parrotfish around the kelp. That's a good information for people that chase gummies east of Prince George. Then, in the rocks, a nice leather jacket. The leather jacket look might not be very appealing to some, but I can tell you they're a great table fish. The second shot, something very special. This time a bell got us a nice bullfish. Now, the bullfish looks very interesting, but it's an excellent feed and quite pricey on the market too. Bullfish make great sashimi or you can cook it in many different ways and I can tell you that you will be surprised. In this shot you can see that sometimes you don't even have to pull the trigger to get a leather jacket. If you target squid, make sure you're on top of the grass. There is a lot of sandy area around here, but that is more flathead or scallops ground. Work the jig consistently. If you drop it on the ground, you may lose it. I can tell you that because over the years we did lose quite few. Saying that anyway in Port Phillip Bay, where we target squid, we are taking the same risk of losing the jig to kelp, coral or just tough grass.
I hope you enjoyed our underwater presentation at Prince George Marker. In future episodes, we'll have more of Abel and Alice diving and filming some more underwater world of Port Phillip Bay. The next video, it's a bit of a mix session at Prince George with few more tips and tricks. Enjoy! This video is from 3rd of October 2021. We launched in Werribee around lunchtime and after scanning around unsuccessfully for some snapper, we end up at Prince George. The water was very calm and very clear. Our standard squid setup is normally to have a snap clip and then a mirror fluorocarbon line, normally 12 to 15 pounds, and that will be hooked up to our main line. These snap clips you can get mustard or hookum brand. They are great as you can change your jigs in seconds. Now here I demonstrate why should you net the squid from behind. Oh well, cop that. This is the motion we use to work the jig. Then we let it fall down slowly and as it's falling that's when the squid will pick it up. As per first video, you just hold the rod and wind. Don't give it any slack line at any time. Here I set the camera to film underwater. Great grassy area and lots of ras, so called paddlefish. this area holds some nice pike this time of the year, I had a soft plastic rod working. First, only few verse. As we start going over sandy patch, we start getting some pike. is the best gummy bite out there. We did get some more squid as well, but fighting pike on light gear was more fun. Check this out. Whoa! He was chasing it. Did you just film? I think I got it. Whoa! He was... The next picture is a successful story of a happy fisherman. My friend Brett Dennis, who's a great fisherman, had a slow start of the season on the reds. I gave him a location which actually worked on those days for me and we got quite a few snappers there, so he became another happy fisherman. To add to this story, I met Brett at the Verabee ramp. Uh, he had his boat uh, on service, so he was there just throwing some soft plastics, catching some brim. I was on my own going to Leopold, chasing some King George Whiting. He approached me and he basically said how he appreciates my reports um, on a Facebook, my fishing reports obviously, and um, we had a chat and meantime I asked him if he wants to jump on board as I'm going to Leopold chasing King George Whiting. We went, we caught some fish, 
another happy fisherman and since then I acquire another great friend. Tutkaruk boat ramp is located on the beautiful Mornington Peninsula in a picturesque setting complemented by a sheltered picnic table and seating. This ramp will give you quick access to squid grounds and the south channel, but it's not recommended for bigger boats. The boat ramp has two concrete lanes that are often covered in sand and are relatively shallow. channel provides enough depth for boats to go through and as you get further in you may only have a few meters on each side to navigate. That's why this boat ramp is suitable for small and medium boats only and it would be advisable to launch during high tide. There is no parking at the boat ramp, so cars and trailers need to be parked along Point Napien Road. During peak periods, this area is packed with holiday makers, so be prepared for long waiting times to launch. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Next week is an episode with a difference. Um, I'm going to show you a few video clips fishing with girls. See you then. I hope, I dream, I wish to catch a big fish. And I do it when I can. I'm a happy fisherman. I do it